today is another bright new day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice in it and be glad in it as we study his word. And like always, we're going to be explaining another often confusing question. So I hope you've got a pen, a paper, and your Bible. And let's get started. Why was Paul in prison? Why was the Apostle Paul in prison? We understand that Paul was in prison several times during his ministry. And almost everywhere he went, there were people who wanted him in prison. It all began when Jesus confronted uh, Saul the Pharisee on the road to Damascus and completely changed the course of Saul's life. This one is a bit long. Just go and read uh, Acts from uh, chapter 9 from verse 1 to 20. Now we understand that God had chosen Saul, better known by many people by his Roman name, Paul, for a special mission. That is to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Acts 9 verse 15, it says, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles, and kings and the children of Israel. Romans 11 13, For I speak unto you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. And also Galatians 2 8. For he that trod effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. So this one fulfilled Paul's calling. And it would it meant that he would really endure much suffering while preaching to the Gentiles. Because the Bible tells us he faced a lot. Think about uh, what the Bible says that uh, Paul was to suffer a lot. In the book of 9, uh, sorry, uh, Acts chapter 9 verse 16, it says, For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. This one included uh, beatings, shipwreck, stonings, and arrests for simply preaching the gospel. Let me show you a place where a couple of these are written. In the book of 2 Corinthians, um, chapter 11, verse 24, it says, Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep in journeys often, in the perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city in perils in the wilderness in perils in the sea in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness in watchings often in a hunger and thirst, in fastings, often in cold and nakedness. All this Paul has suffered. And we know of three times Paul was imprisoned. And given that Paul was active in ministry for 35 years, he certainly would have been arrested and imprisoned at other times as well. And Paul's arrests were a result of He's being faithful to God's call on his life, not allowing or uh, not committing evil. The first Paul's recorded arrest took place in uh, Philippi in Macedonia during his uh, second missionary journey sometime around uh, 51 AD. A demon-possessed slave girl kept following Paul and Silas and shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. Acts chapter 16 verse 17. And the girl was disruptive and annoying. And finally Paul turned to her and commanded the demon to leave her. The girl's owners were furious that their source of income uh, through soothsaying was gone. So they dragged Paul and Silas before 
the authorities and accuse them of causing public riots. The magistrate um, going against the Roman law had them beaten and thrown into prison without a trial. Acts chapter 16 verse 23. It says, And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. But during this imprisonment, uh, the Lord caused an earthquake. Paul and Silas, chains came loose and the prison doors swung open. When the jailer saw the doors open, he assumed that the prisoners had escaped. And knowing that he would be held responsible, he drew out his sword to kill himself. But Paul called out to him, assuring him that all the prisoners were still there. The jailer was so overcome with the gratitude that uh, he took Paul and Silas into his home and tended their wounds. Paul spoke to him about Jesus, and the jailer and his entire household received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and they were baptized. Look at uh, the book of Acts, chapter uh, 16, verse 31. You can read all the way to verse 34. It gives that story. So Paul first imprisonment resulted in glory for God and the salvation of many. And the second uh, recorded arrest which took place in Jerusalem was prophesied beforehand. Look at the, the book of uh, Acts chapter 21 verse 11. It says, And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and brought his own hands and feet and said, Thus says the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. We understand that uh, even with a warning, Paul chose to continue towards the capital. James and the elders of the church in uh, Jerusalem greeted him warmly. They also informed him of the Jewish believers who thought Paul was teaching other Jews to reject their Jewish heritage. And hoping to demonstrate this was not true and at the advice of the elders Paul joined four men in their purification rites this required a visit to the temple but some non-believing Jews from Asia recognized Paul in the temple and stirred up the crowds against him shouting fellow Israelites help us this is the man who teaches everyone everywhere against our people and our law and this place and besides, he has brought Greeks into the temple and defiled this holy place. And of course, that is found in the book of Acts chapter 21 verse 28. None of this was true. But uh, nevertheless, the apostle uh, uh, was uh, almost killed by the people. And definitely we know that uh, Paul was quickly arrested by the Romans and put in jail. This uh, occurred sometime around uh, 57 AD. Now, the commander of the regiment in charge of Paul allowed him to speak to the crowd. And in the book of Acts chapter 22, we see a record of Paul someone which included his own personal testimony of encountering Jesus on the road to Damascus. The crowd shouted for Paul's death Acts chapter 22 verse 22 it says and they gave him audience unto this world a word and then lifted up their voices and said away with such a fellow from the earth for it is not fit that he should live now the Roman commander sent Paul to the barracks with orders that uh, he be flogged and interrogated that is found in the book of Acts chapter 22 verse 24. It says, The chief captain commanded him to be brought into the castle and bade that he should be examined by his scourging, that he might know wherefore they cried so against him. End of quote. 
unknown to the commander, Paul was a, a Roman citizen, and therefore it was illegal for him to be flogged without having been found guilty. And on this occasion, Paul spared himself a beating by the <laughs> by the fact that he brought this issue that hey guys, I'm I'm a Roman citizen. He brought this to the attention of the centurion. And of course, alarmed and still unsure why the Jews were accusing Paul, the commander decided to send Paul to the Sanhedrin, which was uh, the Jewish governing body. Look at uh, the book of Acts chapter 22 verse 30. It says, On the morrow, because he would have known the uh, satanity, wherefore he was accused of the Jews, he loosed him from his bands and commanded the chief priest and all their counsel to appear and brought Paul down and set uh, him before them. So after that, we see the next day Paul uh, making his uh, defense before the Sanhedrin, saying he was on trial for his hope in the resurrection of the dead. And the Pharisees held to the doctrine of resurrection, but the Sadducees did not. Therefore, Paul leveraged the disagreements within the Sanhedrin to defend his belief in the gospel. The book of Acts chapter uh, 23 verse 6 to 8 says, But when Paul perceived that uh, one, one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. In the hope of resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. And uh, verse 7 gives us something here. It says, And when he had so said, there arose a discussion between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. For the Sadducees says that uh, there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. Paul was still wise. All right? So now, we understand this uh, that uh, some of the Pharisees rose to Paul's defense and the ensuring dispute within the Sanhedrin became so violent that the Roman commander ordered Paul to be taken back to the barracks for his own safety. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 23 verse 11 and the night following the, uh, following, the Lord stood by him and said be of good cheer Paul for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem so must thou bear witness also at Rome. And now, while Paul was in prison in Jerusalem, some of the Jews conspired to assassinate him. But the plot was discovered by Paul's nephew who warned the Roman commander. Paul was then taken by night and a heavy guard to Caesarea, where his imprisonment continued. And then Paul stood trial before the governor, uh, governor Felix, Felix was seemingly convicted by the message of the gospel but responded in fear rather than repentance. Think about this one in uh, Acts chapter 24 verse 25. It says, And uh, as he reasoned of the righteousness, temperance and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. <laughs> so, Felix kept Paul in prison for two more years, hoping for Paul to offer him a bribe. But of course, you know, Paul couldn't do that. The Bible says in Acts chapter 24, verse 26, he hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul, that he might lose him. Wherefore, he sent for him the oftener and communed with him. And as a favor to the Jews, Felix uh, left prison, uh, Paul in prison, when he was succeeded by Pontius Festus around uh, 59 AD. Now, in Jerusalem, the chief priests and Jews, Jewish uh, leaders, who still hated Paul, presented their case against him before Festus and asked Paul to be transferred to Jerusalem. And in reply, Festus invited uh, some of the Jewish leaders to come to Caesarea where Paul was being held. Another trial uh, followed, but uh, none of the charges could be proven. 
Festus wanted to grant uh, a favor to the Jews, so he asked if Paul would go to Jerusalem to stand trial there. But for Paul refused, appealing to Caesar instead. Paul, before he could be sent to Rome, King Agrippa arrived in Caesarea. First had, uh, uh, Festus uh, asked for Agrippa's advice and Paul stood before Agrippa, which was another opportunity to share the gospel. Because Paul had appealed uh, to Caesar, he was then sent to Rome around uh, 60 AD. And although a prisoner in Rome, Paul was allowed to live in a house and uh, receive care and provision from his friends and family. You can read that in the book of Acts, chapter 28, from verse 30 to 31. And he was uh, under this house arrest for two years, where he welcomed all to see him. The Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 28, verse 31, it says that uh, preaching the kingdom of, of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him, he welcomed all who came to see him. He proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. So it was uh, during these house arrest that Paul wrote the book of uh, the books of Ephesians, Philemon, Colossians, Philippians. Again, God did not waste his uh, servant's suffering, but inspired Paul to write part of what would become our New Testament. Paul was uh, released from this imprisonment uh, sometime around 62 AD. And finally, the final arrest of Paul, which is not detailed in uh, the book of Acts, occurred around somewhere in uh, 66 AD. And once again, he was held under Roman guard, but this time he was confined to a jail cell. From there, Paul penned his second letter to Timothy. 2 Timothy 2 uh, verse 8 and 9 he says remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer even unto the uh, bonds but the word of God is not bound in the last of uh, Paul's prison epistles his tone is weary and he realizes the end of his earthly ministry is coming soon. He says in 2 Timothy 4, 6-8, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me. Now, Paul keeps on encouraging Timothy to keep faith. Think about 2 Timothy 1 verse 13. He says, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. And uh, 2 Timothy 2 2 says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. 2 Timothy 4 2 says, Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And of course, he wanted uh, him to come and see him if it was possible. 2 Timothy 4 9, do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. And of course, also, uh, verse 13 says the clock that I left at Taurus with Carpus when thou comest bring with thee and the books but specially the parchments Paul was feeling lonely as many of his uh, co-workers had gone elsewhere for ministry at least uh, one had uh, even deserted Paul think about this Paul spoke about this in the uh, 2 Timothy 4.10 He says, For Demas has forsaken me, 
having loved this, pre- uh, this present world and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. The only Luke, only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring with uh, him with thee, for he's profitable to me for the ministry. You see, some people had even ran away. Now, in prison, Paul wrote with hopeful confidence. He said this, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. With the Lord, who is the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but all who have longed for his appearing. That is 2 Timothy 4, 7-8. And Paul claimed that the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. 2 Timothy 4.18 At the end of the third imprisonment, Paul was martyred by the Roman Empire. He was indeed brought safely to be with the Lord. As the Bible uh, indicates in Philippians 1 verse 21 to 23, it says, For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a straight, uh, big street too, having a desire to depart and uh, be with the Christ, which is far better. Second Corinthians 5.8 It says, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So no more would evil men attack him. He would never see a prison. And Paul's life after conversion is a picture of total devotion to the purposes and plans of God. His words in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 explain how Paul viewed his life. He said this, and I quote, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live but Christ lives in me. The life that I now lived in the body I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. End of quote. And Paul could endure imprisonment as an innocent man because he counted his life as nothing. Think about uh, Acts chapter 20 verse 24 he says but none of these things move me neither count I my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God Philippians 3 7 it says but what things were gained to me those I counted loss for Christ yeah doubtless And I count all things but loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and I count them but dung that I may win Christ. Even though people and life treated Paul unjustly, he still loved. Paul continued to preach the gospel and used every opportunity to share the truth of Jesus even with prison guards. Think about Philippians 4 verse 22. All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. And we see as we conclude that Paul was in prison because people loved darkness instead of light, John 3.19, and they suppressed the truth by their wickedness, Romans 1.18. And Paul's accusers did not want to hear the message of salvation. So they imprisoned and eventually killed the messenger. Jesus warns us that we should not be surprised when the world hates Christians. Because it hated him first. John 15 verse 18 it says, If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. And John 3 verse 13 
it tells us, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. May we all embrace suffering for Christ with the grace and humility that the Apostle Paul showed. That's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you've learned something. And uh, remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcasts and subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new Bible question. If you like to get saved or you need to get a step-by-step order of salvation so that you can well preach to a friend or family or maybe you feel led to support our ministry please visit our website keithmuoki.com otherwise I hope to see you in the next one